sometimes 401k, yeah. Things that produce income, things that bring money into your life, right? Now again, the way things are sold to you is, oh, it's a great house, a great investment, pulling your money in there. No. The best investment, honestly, is to rent a cheap apartment, buy, a, buy an investment house, and rent it to someone. That's what I did for six years. Then I bought my house cash. I have the whole Oh, no. <laughs> I still don't know. Um, so, right. So, an asset appreciates in value. So, 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 jewelry is not an asset. Gold bullion is an asset. So, jewelry. So, this costs like five grand a store. I'm my family jewelry. I've never paid five thousand dollars. But it costs like five grand a store. But you know what you get when you try to sell it back to the store? You get penny weight. You don't get market value. You get penny weight value, which is like one fourth, one fifth of the actual value. So gold is not an asset. Gold bullion is an asset. You should buy a hunk of gold. That is an asset. It appreciates, and yes, you have to pay a commission, but that is an asset. Sure, you treat that as an asset, right? But we're trained to be employed. We're not trained to be entrepreneurs. Um, now, why do most of us struggle financially? It's because of the bullshit stories we tell ourselves. We're insecure for race, country of origin, color, uh, sex. I'm tall, I'm short, fat, I'm skinny, I don't have hair, I have, I'm, I, I'm losing my hair, I'm not, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough. These are just the stories that we tell ourselves. Why don't you quit your job? Why don't you work for yourself? It's scary. You're scared to lose that income. You're scared to lose your insurance. You're scared to lose all these things. Yeah, take a picture. That's the way to do it. Uh, so fear. But fear comes from not being trained the right way. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking down to anyone in the room. If you're not trained on economic principles, how can you be good at economic stuff, right? School teaches you a trade or you know, to be a manager or to be an accountant or whatever it is. But you know how many accountants, you know how many people leave school with an accounting degree and can't do their own taxes? What? You have an accounting degree and you can't do your taxes? That's built in. So we get into conspiracy theories sometimes, like taxes. We're going to get into taxes in a minute. Because taxes is the most gangster part of life. Now. We, we, are, we live in a country where we are socially engineered. Why do you have tax breaks to get married? Because people that get married tend to have children. And when people produce children, it promotes the population that the country doesn't like, go under. Like, so you are given an incentive to get married. So you get a tax break to get married. When you open a corporation, you are given an incentive to become an entrepreneur. Because entrepreneurs create jobs and income. They raise the GDP. So you are given a tax break if you own a corporation. It's not like a way to keep the poor down. It, it gets me annoyed because it, it it misrepresents the economy and the rules to the people that follow it. Don't see these things as stuff that keeps you down. Learn the rules, play the game better. That's it. Learn the rules, play the game better. Don't be mad if the game has rules. Don't, that's stupid. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say what uh, you were saying about people being stuck in that mindset. Because I always say, I'm, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to lie, but I'm going really? to the city for years. And my thinking was job security. Yeah. You know, I've never ventured out to the private industry because I had kids in job security. Okay, so. And that, and like you said, that is a mindset. And you were in a union, right? Yeah. Okay, so, so, you, so, so New York City unions are an anomaly. My, my, my wife is a teacher, she's a special teacher. She doesn't make a ton of money, she makes like $77,000. Now, she has, she has a master's. A lot of people that make master's make a ton of So she makes $77,000. However, her union guarantees a 7% return on her pension. Which means that once she gets out of, once she gets, 
when she retires at the age of like 56, she'll have like $65,000 a year in guaranteed income. Now, it's good and it's bad. It's good because you can get that job and you can have a set future. It's bad because it's unsustainable. Why do rich people and why do corporations want to kill unions? Because they're unsustainable. If the market produces 2.4% growth, and you're guaranteed 7% growth, who pays for the other 4.6%? Who? We do. So you're paying your own guaranteed pension. It's unsustainable, it doesn't make sense. Now, the reason it was, the reason that came about was because in the, you know, the turn of the century, we were, New York was growing and we needed teachers. We needed to make it really attractive to become a teacher, to, become, to work for the municipalities. Nobody wanted to be a garbage man, so what do we do? We pay him 80 grand and give him a huge pension. You know, so now people with garbage men love it. Like my boy's a garbage man, he makes $130,000 a year. He has a, he's going to have a 65% pension. He's going he's to make like 90 grand a year, guaranteed after the age of 55. And he's a garbage man. Right? So, like, who are you judging? Being a garbage man ain't cool. Oh, it's not? Oh, it's not? I'm gonna retire 55 and make 95 grand a year doing nothing. And then I can be like, a, like I can be a waste management consultant and make an extra 50 or 60. Right? So like, New York City unions, not even unions in the country, New York City unions like that one and out where yes, it pays to stay there. Like I worked in hotels. I didn't want to work at the front desk forever, but there were people that worked at the front desk for like 35 years. And they made like $35 an hour. They had crazy benefits. You get really cheap or free travel. You get free food every day. You know, if you do a double, you get to stay there for free. You get crazy benefits. A really strong union, you essentially couldn't get fired. People would steal money if you didn't get fired. Um, so, New York City unions are that one anomaly where, yeah, you can stay in the same place for a long time, you can work that same job. That is, that is what we call a statistical outlier. We can't, we can't put that into the bell curve and talk about it as norm because it's outside of the norm. So, oh, it totally boxes you in. And most union members are, yeah, and most union members are curmudgeons. What's a curmudgeon? Someone who's just like, pissed off. Always, always bitching about the man. Because that's the culture bred in. They don't want you to go anywhere. The union stays strong by retaining members. So they they discourage you from moving on. Yeah. Um it's easier to just take a picture. So they want they want um, members to stay. Because that's how they stay strong. I mean the uh, local six is the hotel union, it's the biggest, strongest union, it's bigger than the UFT. Because it, it encompasses all hotel restaurant workers, which is a ton of people, right? And a lot of hotel men, a lot of the hotel workers make all money. You can make 80 grand working at a front desk, a large hotel. You know, not like Holly Inn, but like the last hotel I managed was in New York House. They made 35 dollars an hour. So just stand there and check us too. Hello. Okay, thank you. Give me the keys. 35 dollars an hour. Again, it's an anomaly. Eva. So, yeah, we get caught in these cycles, we tell ourselves a lot of things. There's just excuses for like why we can't branch out. You know, there's just excuses. Um, anyone have questions, by the way? We're up, we're up to like the hour mark, so I usually take questions. Yes? No? Yes? But in economics, 
In economics, what do you learn? Micro and macroeconomics, like how the how the overall economy works, and then like supply chain. So you learn like you learn some economic principles. You learn about like the treasury. You learn about the Federal Reserve, which is not a federal entity, by the way. The Federal Reserve is just federal, federal Reserve. Not a, not a government. Um, So you're not going to learn any of this stuff in school anyway. This, and then, this is the problem. This is why this is why NBA players retired and broke for four years. Who would make like 190 million dollars? Like broke, right? Sorry. Actually, yeah, well, I was never moved 40 million. Mike Mike Tyson moved 400 million. 400 million dollars. Uh, that. Whatever your story is, I got six kids, a little bit of box, whatever. If you got a job, 
you would pay that new tax. So pay yourself through the way. And like I said, maximize your contributions. So typically you're allowed like 5% of your, uh, 5 to 7% of your income you can put away to 401k. And they'll typically match you one to one, up to three, half to four or five. What that means is, is they will match you percent to percent up until 3%. After 3%, they will match you half a percent. So if you put away 7% and they match you full to 3, half to 5, that means that you get 11% instead of 7%. Go ahead. Half, so they match half. That's fine. So it accrues, yeah. No match at all. Fine. So. So her, yeah, her buddy, her buddy uh, make, gets a match for two years. Get the two years of free money. This company sucks. So 401k, 401k to get a match. So match means that they that they they pay into your 401k. So if you're putting away the match, which is seven percent, they typically, typically not always, different companies have different rules, but they will typically match you. One to one, up to three, half to five, which means up to three percent, they will match you three percent. Three or three percent becomes six percent. And then they will match you half to five, which means you get one more percent up to five. So you got six plus the two that you're putting in, which is eight, plus the one they gave you is nine. And if you go to seven, you get eleven. Like there's a lot of numbers, but I think you're following me, right? Yeah. So you get free money. If you don't, if you're saying, oh, you know, I can't I can't afford it, yes you can! Because your future self will thank your present self for putting that money away, because when you're 69 years old, when you're 74 years old, and you have a 401k that brings in an extra 25 grand a year, you're like, thank God, young me wasn't stupid. Thank God, young me didn't buy another pair of toys. Thank God, young me didn't buy another $1,200 bag. That's um, who in this, who in this, who in this room has a thousand dollars that they can like play with? Okay. Um, How many people in this room have a thousand dollar cell phone? Everybody. All of y'all. Put your hands up. Every single one. Seventy percent of you. Oh yeah. Oh, fair enough. If you have an iPhone or a So if you don't, so if you're, if you're at a job and they don't offer 401k, there's open your own 401k. You're not going to get any match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so let's, let's. I'm on camera. I'm going to say this. This is not financial advice. I am not a financial planner. I am not qualified to give you financial advice. However, I am lending ideas for my own life to help you with financial advice. Send that on camera. <laughs> uh, I would suggest going to America's Best 401k. I know it's a ridiculous name, uh, but it's there. So they work with like middle income to lower income people to get them the best possible 401k. The other thing, the other thing is, and we're gonna, I'm going to illustrate how it works. You have to harness the power of uh, compound interest. You have to harness the power. Of to make it simple. If you have an account that's worth hundred dollars and you get ten percent, next year you have hundred and ten dollars. Then you get up, then you get ten percent on hundred and ten dollars. So ten percent on hundred and ten dollars is eleven. So now it's hundred twenty one dollars. So you compound the interest over the years. And I don't know if are you are you familiar with seventy two? Go home, all write this down, Google seventy two. Learn it, live by it, own it, love it. Google seventy two. So a lot of the stress that we have in work and life is money related. But if your paper is good, all of a sudden your job is like so much good. Like you hate your job less, you hate your manager less. Because you know that your money is actually growing way more than your manager. Because your manager has like four pairs of Louis Vuittons, but you have Levi's and 35 grand in the bank. So who's winning? You know what I'm saying? Like, who's winning? Yeah. 
yet. So these companies, these companies, you know what they do? They write letters for you. That's all they do. They have eloquent, aggressive people that make phone calls and write letters. You pay the money to do that. But you can do it on your own. So if you want to work on your credit score, write letters, because there's a lot of stuff on your credit score that works right. Like, I had a New York Sports Club membership on my credit score when I was 19. But when, when it was originated, I was 14. So I wouldn't use my information. And that was negatively affecting my credit score. So I wrote a letter like 15 times, because what, what are they going to do? They're going to ignore you. Because the New York Sports Club wants the money. They don't want to, they don't want to write it off the bad debt. They want the money. So yeah, you gotta write, you gotta write it 15 times because some person at some desk making their job. So you're gonna push your email or your note aside. Write it on your email. Like I, don't complain. Write it on your email. Um, that's what they do now. Credit cards. Funny. If your balance goes over 40% of your available credit, it hurts your score. Credit card companies don't want you to use all the credit because then it looks like you need. So don't even worry about maxing it out. If you max it out, it's terrible. Don't go over 40. So if your if your available balance is thousand dollars, don't use one of four dollars. Don't go yeah. Don't go over forty percent of your available balance. You know. So if your if your if your if your available credit is ten thousand dollars, don't use one of four. Now don't get mad about those rules. Just understand the rules and play the game better. You know what I'm saying? Don't get mad about all oh, the stupid crap. Whatever! Like, what do you complain? Don't complain. There's no rules, guys. Yeah. Yeah, so, so people buy, like, socks to, like, build their credit score. That doesn't really, that doesn't really work. You buy something for 150 bucks, pay it off. Early, in full. You know? Buy stuff, don't use cash, buy it on a credit card, pay it off early, fast. Okay, so there's so there's this sweet spot between how many open credit lines you have and how much you use them. Now you, you shouldn't really have more than four, unless you're a ball, ball should do whatever But unless you're making like three, four hundred grand a year, you shouldn't really have more than four or five open credit lines. Yeah. Well, so like I have two Amexes, I have Capital One, I have a business card, and then I have like another another card, right? So like that's like the normal. Most people have like, like if you bank with Chase, Chase is probably gonna give you a credit card. Right, so it's normal to have four or five open credit lines. But if you don't use them and they get closed, it hurts your score. You made your bet. So, so what you just told me was if you didn't you didn't keep up with your account. It was your job, not theirs. So we'll say it was Capital One. Capital One has six million customers. You have one account. It's your job. It's your job. Whoever, whoever, it's your job. Like Capital One is not going to. It's not your job. They're not going to tell you, hey, you want to really save you money. No, it's your job. It's your account, your credit card, you manage it. Um, don't, ever buy, don't ever open a store account. Do not have a Gap credit card. Do not have a Victoria's Secret credit card. Do not have any of that. Except there's one, well, there, there's one kind of exception. Large chain department stores. Macy's, Raymond Flanagan, yada, yada, yada. Home Depot, Lowe's. Those are for large purchases. Those are for large purchases that you can pay off interest-free for a year. So like, I bought all my living room furniture, right? It was like eight grand. But I can pay it off in a year, interest-free. So you break down 8,000 by 12 months. It's much easier for me to do, plus I split it with my wife. It's much easier to do over that amount of time, right? So 
You want to redo your bathroom with three grand, you don't have three grand. Go to Home Depot, get a Home Depot card, put it on a Home Depot card, they give you 18 months. It's just great. Um, it's a lot of words. You can write it down or take a picture or not. Um, most of us trade our time for money. That is a losing proposition. You have a finite amount of time. You have access to an unlimited amount of money. So create a scenario where money works for you. Where your money is bringing in passive income. Now again, we're going to talk about taxes. Passive income, well, who pays the highest tax rate, do you know? Poor middle class. Why? Yes, I'm middle class. No. No. Because entrepreneurship is incentivized. Entrepreneurship is incentivized. All gets the same. So we just we we middle class and full class we work so yeah. we don't have no incentive to no we Well there is a standard tax rate. Yeah. And you and, and people in the lower middle class pay the standard tax rate. People in the higher classes pay the corporate tax rate. Because corporate corporations are incentivized. You are it's there's an incentive to start your own business. So if you're broke, but you start your own business, you are going to pay lower taxes. We're gonna to get to that. Someone over there grab one of those. Or you please grab me a water. Thank you. Um my damn business. Your job, your profession, your trade is not your business. So you know how like it's cool, right? Thank you, So everyone has a side hustle now, right? I'm doing my side hustle. That's as old as the day's world. But it's a new concept that people that have, have just caught on. I told you about my confused trajectory before, right? I made more money than everyone I was working with. Because so I was just trying to do stuff. I was just doing stuff. You know, what, you know what most people do in life? The bare minimum. You become exceptional if you just do stuff. When you tell someone, oh, I'm doing this, they become impressed with you. I told you I'd be catchy, give me a, a platform. I didn't do it. I just lived. People are impressed when you do things. People are impressed when you just, just try something. Because they're like, oh my god, I don't try anything. You're awesome. You tried something. Winners fail the most. Losers never fail. Because they don't do shit. Right? So like, don't be afraid to fail. You're going to fail. I've failed a ton of times. The only reason I can talk to you guys here, right now, is because I have failed so much that I took notes and I told, I'm telling you about it. I'm not smarter than you. I'm not better than you. I'm definitely, well, I might be better than you. <laughs> no, I'm not better than you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm in no way special. I just do stuff, take notes. And when I fall on my face, I remember why. There's some people who make mistakes or fail and they make excuses. And the only difference between a winner and a loser is that winners take notes and losers make excuses. That's the only difference. You didn't fail a class because the teacher didn't like you. Listen, if you had A grades, they can't give you an F. Maybe they give you a B plus. Maybe. But if you have A grades, you can't fail. You didn't fail because the teacher didn't like you. You didn't get fired because the manager didn't like you. I mean, it's a very... These are all general terms. Sometimes we get fired for bad reasons. But for the most part, if you're, because listen, here, here's the thing. Do you want someone with purple hair and is moody that is a beast and produces, or do you want someone that plays by the rules and sucks? You want the purple hair and moody girl who's a beast that makes you money. You don't care what color she is, you don't care what country she's from, you don't give a shit. She's bringing bread. So it ain't your haircut, it's not how tall you are, it's not what you look like, it's how hard you work and how much people respect you. Because listen, you may not like me, you don't have to like me, but if I give you a fair shake every single time, you're going to respect me. You're going to know that when I deal with Phil, I'm going to get a fair shake. Because my brand that I built to you is fair. You may not like me, you're not going to invite me over to watch a football game, but every single time that you interact with me at work, or wherever it is, you know that I'm going to give you a fair shake. So build that, do that, and it's, it, it's 
and like you're the sole proprietor, which means you, you bear larger burdens than everyone else. So then you get other tax incentives from being from being the curator of like a large conglomerate. And you probably not doing that. You don't want to borrow thirty two people. So that's not what you're doing. So make yourself an LLC. I mean, some so some some jobs won't pay an LLC. They only want to pay you because they, they, there's like a conflict of interest, but you have nothing to lose by asking. By going to HR and being like, listen, I want to make myself an LLC because I want to save money on my taxes. And they might say no. That's fine. It's real. It's not, their, not really their decision. It's a corporate's decision. And if you annoy corporate enough, they'll probably get you away. They're not definitely going to get you away, but you'll probably get your way. But what I'm trying to tell you is, do something outside of your job. Like, make money outside of your job some way. I have no idea what that's going to be for you. I have no idea what that's going to be for you. Because I don't, know your, I don't know your personal skill sets. I don't know what your personality is like. I don't know what you like to do. I don't need to know what you like to do. What I do know is that you can do all these things. <laughs> so figure out what your thing is. Like, some people sell Lopito on Thanksgiving. Lopito. <laughs> Like, you ever, you ever been to Coney Island? No cracker, no cracker. Like, that could be an LLC. Nemo, Nemo. Nemo. So, get yourself an LLC. Find some place. All right, I'm on camera. I am not teaching how to launder money. <laughs> I am not a financial advisor. I am not qualified to give financial advice. Get yourself an LLC. Sell somewhere that's legitimate. Your income is your income.